Hello everyone and welcome to War Thunder Ground Forces. I finally decided to get in here. I ended up buying a cheap tank pack and well here we go and as you can see this is my first game ever in War Thunder Ground Forces and I do apologize for the lack of HUD. Uh, there's no heads up display and that is because well this is recording a replay and apparently replays in War Thunder just aren't quite as good as the World of Tanks replays as far as uh, recording them for YouTube purposes are. Uh, so you won't see any tank Really, you won't see any tank markers at all, and eh, you just have to use your imagination a little bit. I'll try to make sure the ones in the future are a little bit better. I'll try to record the actual battles and then go from there. But uh, I didn't realize this is how it was going to be when I when I was planning on just using the replays. But anyway, I do want to again quickly apologize for the terrible mic quality today. Uh, well. Hopefully that'll be changed in a few days. We've got a different headset coming in. I'm going to return this Razor headset. And I explained all that in the last Next Card Game video as I was driving around destroying everything. But here we go. Now, as you can't see, <laughs> okay, there's two allies right here in front of me. Kind of helping me out. And as you can see by all the shells flying every which direction, we're getting beat up. Uh, there is several enemies around. There is two or three enemies over right in front of me right there driving around. You'll be very lucky if you can even get a glimpse of them, though. Uh, because all I really had to shoot at at the time was the markers. Couldn't really see them through the grass and the trees and all that. Uh, as you can see in the bottom left corner there, I'm taking some hits. I'm losing my crew and my modules are getting damaged. It's not going to be long. And this is where I learned the hard way. Look how slow vehicles back up in War Thunder. If a vehicle backed up this slow in World of Tanks, you'd be like, what's going on? You'd, you'd think you were lagging out or something. Uh, but no, this is... That's just how it goes. And by the way, this is from an arcade battle. The first battle I ever played was an arcade battle. I think the second one I went to a realistic battle type, and I haven't went back since. I just decided I like realistic better. I like the, a little bit more realism. I haven't tried the simulator. Uh, actually, yeah, I have. I tried it once or twice. Eh, it's not too much different from realistic. It's, it's a nice change, except for the whole having pretty much no tank markers at all. In realistic. And there I am shooting at more aircraft. That's what I like to do. I've only actually hit maybe one of them before. Uh, it's it's not as easy as it looks, that's for sure. But at the beginning of the video I was talking about how I bought a tank pack so I could play on here. And it's because this game's still in closed beta. The War Thunder, the ground forces part is in closed beta. The aircraft thing is in open beta so you can test that out whenever you want for free. Uh, but for this, you either need to complete one of the in-game missions, which they have from time to time. I'm not sure if there's any available right now. Uh, or you can buy yourself a tank pack. I decided to buy the cheaper pack. The cheaper one's around $20, $25, and the more expensive ones you can get are like $100. So really, you can spend as much as you want. I just went with the cheapest one because I wasn't sure if I was going to like this game that much. But with the four or eight hours it's up a day, it's only up a few hours a day here and there. Um, but I've been looking forward to playing it. I just wish that my schedule worked out a little bit better with it. Because one of them I'm always sleeping for, and one of them I seem to always be at work for. Uh, so that, that's a bit of a bummer. But here, here we are, we're pushing ahead. This is still, I believe, the reserve level tank, by the way. Let's see what we can find. Not all of this video is going to be in the reserve level. This is uh, a few clips from several videos. I'm trying to acquire some targets, looking off in the distance. I decide, okay, I've got several allies up there, let's let's push forward a little bit more. Most of them are AI. Hey look, another plane to shoot at. <sighs> I think I shell might have actually hit him. It's a shame, I can't quite tell because just the way the replay is here, but I'm pretty sure that hit him. Otherwise, every time you'd hit an enemy, uh, you'd get a a message popping up on your screen saying you hit him or, or whatever you tell you if you did any critical damage on the right side it would tell you if the target was undamaged it would tell you if you just hit him and didn't really do any kind of real damage and that guy there I was kind of wondering if he was a, an enemy tank again this is my first battle uh, destroyed tanks your shells will fly right through just like they weren't there you can still drive into them but your shells will go through them so you can't take cover and I finally made it to the cap circle here uh, and now ahead of me are some more AI and they are kind of stupid. They're shooting at nothingness. <laughs> and that was kind of concerning me because this is now my second or third battle ever. And I'm kind of like, what are they shooting at? Is there tanks right beside me? And this is the very beginning of the game. I decided, I think this was possibly a realistic battle type. But no, this battle was kind of sad on my part. <laughs> I didn't really think it through. 
And I didn't really know the map clearly, as you able to tell here. And that shell in front of me kind of concerns me. I'm like, okay, what's over to my left? Pretty sure it was just the allies shooting there. This map here, though, has really grown on me in the, in the battles after this. It's possibly my favorite. We're going to roll up here. We're going to require some targets. There will be some targets to shoot at. Again, they're going to be extremely difficult, if impossible, for you guys to see, which is unfortunate. I do apologize for that. Off of the distance there, there is a few tanks. I'll spot in the bush and I'll shoot at them, and I'll hit a couple of them. I don't think I'll kill any of them. If you can see a pixel moving, then you're very lucky. But the difference between arcade and realistic, the main difference is, well, in realistic, your vehicles don't move as quickly. Uh, so, for example, in the T-50, what you're going to see up next, I believe, uh, you're a little faster in arcade. Also, there's no shell drop indicator, so in arcade, you'll be able to see how much your shell is going to drop, and it'll tell you how much you have to raise up your gun to compensate for that shell drop, whereas in realistic, it does not. And here comes my big mistake. I thought I could just roll down this hill and keep on driving. Nope. I realized at the last second, oh crap, this is going to suck, <laughs> and I flip myself and get myself stuck in a hole, drowning. <sighs> you can see my crew and modules are just getting picked off, picked off one by one until it finally kills all my crew. And so much for that tank. Luckily, however, we do have another battle here, and we did have another life to spawn into. And this is the same map, same tank, therefore. and. Let's go see what we can kill. I thought about going this way. Too bad you can't see the mini-map. Uh, again, you can't see that in the replays. Replays seem to be more or less for screenshots more than anything. Uh, let's let's see what we can find, though. We're deciding... Okay, heck with that. We're not going to go right. We're not going to go down the path. We're going to go towards the beach. I looked at the mini-map, and I saw that was the most open area. I decided I didn't really want to fight in forests. I, I wanted to be able to see what was approaching me. I wanted to have hard cover that I could hide behind not just relying on trees. And you'll see here, these trees, they look like they're not getting knocked down. In the actual battle, they were getting knocked down as I drove over them, but for some reason in the replay they don't, even though you can see the grass still moving out of the way as my tank tries over it in the replay, which is odd. Now keep in mind again, this is my very first time ever going this direction. I was pretty much alone in doing this. There might have been an AI player there, or two of them, but that's about it, and that's pretty much useless. You don't want to count on an AI. Definitely not as much as you can count on players, which hopefully isn't a whole lot. Uh, but off the distance there. That's an allied tank over there. A couple allies shooting at nothing. Decided, decided. Okay, let's move up. Let's go behind this hardcover. We'll see where that leads me. I'm going to try to swoop around. If those AI players are going that way, then I'll just trek on right through. Hey, what happens when you go through water? turns out it really just slows you down a lot. If it's too deep, I found out that you do have about five seconds, just kind of like World of Tanks, before you drown. And I haven't actually tested the drowning, but I've been told that if you do drown, if it reaches the end of that five second timer, then it just slowly picks off your crew and modules, just like it kind of did when I was in the water there a few days ago. But uh, in a way, I'm kind of glad that uh, I waited this long to try out War Thunder Ground Forces, because it seems like a lot of the big bugs, a lot of the little ones too, have been ironed out, slowly becoming a more polished game. And oh look, there's an enemy. Oh crap, you brought a friend. Oh crap, you brought two friends. Oh no. <laughs> well, let's just start shooting at them and see what happens. I think they might all be AI. I'm going to put one to the side of that guy since he's showing us his side. I'm going to take a few hits ourselves. Put another one into him. Then he's going to sit there at the edge of the hill to get another shot at us. And we managed to take him out. This guy's approaching us now. I'm thinking, oh no, they're just unloading into me. I'm putting a few more into him. And let's see what we can do. Nope, nothing. Well, turns out there was a fourth guy coming up there. This guy got killed. I don't think that was by my doing. <laughs> turns out it was one versus four. Except for maybe an ally behind me. Who knows who that was. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do too bad. Now, we're moving on to the T-50. Now, if you know this tank or World of Tanks, well... It's a little bit different here. The T-50 actually has a notable amount of armor in War Thunder. I mean, it's the same value, but just because of how everything's balanced out and set up, it, it's actually more. And the T-50 is notably faster 
than the tank I was in before, which I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say that tank was named the T26, but I'm probably completely wrong there. And I take advantage of that speed. I decide that I really like ramming. Now, I, I hate to compare World of Tanks to War Thunder because they are two completely different games. Uh, you really shouldn't be someone that's saying, oh yeah, War Thunder Ground Force is a whole lot better than World of Tanks is because they're, they're very different. They have their similarities, but those similarities include and are limited to involving driving a tank to destroy other tanks. I mean, you look at the maps, they're completely different maps, the way they're set up. World of Tanks is kind of made uh, so that, you know, just the tactics would be different even, whereas these, I don't know, these War Thunder maps, they're more wide open and they have more realistic terrain. Uh, there seem like much bigger maps, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but we're going to see off in the distance here to our right, to our, in the direction we're just kind of looking, we're going to see some enemy tanks off in the distance in the bushes, and we're going to get a few shots off on them. We do have a little more armor in this than we did in that previous tank we were driving, so we can afford to take a few hits. Well, our suspension's already damaged. We've got at least one tank shooting at us. The longer we sit here, the more that'll know about us. And I'm trying to figure out a good way to get a shot off over in the distance without exposing too much of my tank. And I decided to roll up back a little farther so I could peek over the hill and show mostly just my turret. would be the best way to do it. <laughs> the bushes are in the way. That was kind of bugging me. Uh, and where are the tanks I have that turned off, so if I go in sniper mode, I don't see grass, so that I can peek over hills more effectively, and therefore shoot the ground less or miss my target's uh, weak spots less. Now we're taking a few hits. <laughs> Our turret does have a fair amount of armor, though I'm not too worried about it. No real damage was done to us. Let's see. I'm gonna roll up again, try for another shot. Try to peek through all the bushes. Oh, hit a tree. <laughs> and hit another tree. And somehow we started to get pushed around by that tree or we're not permitted to move backwards anymore and then all of a sudden we kind of glitched through it a tiny bit, which is weird, but anyway, I've decided, okay, let's flank around these guys. Let's go around this big rock in front of me. I've never pushed up this far before. And as soon as I get out in the open, crap, there's an enemy tank. Well, let's try out World of Tanks tactics. Let's try shooting and driving evasively. Let's see how that goes. At least at the very least, if I don't drive directly towards him, then I'm showing him some angled armor. And I decide here, okay, I'm probably going to be dead. I saw another enemy go behind him, behind the rocks over there. So I decide, okay, let's ram him. <laughs> okay, show me your side, thank you. So I'll unload a few into the side. I'm traversing as fast as I possibly can right there, including my, my turret turret and suspension. And I saw that other guy go behind the rock, so I think, okay, maybe those tanks there are dead, by the way. Just maybe I can catch this guy by surprise. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work out like that. I appear right in front of his gun. I go for another ram. That damage, that hurt my loader. <laughs> and my fuel tank is damaged, so I'm very close to being set on fire there. Now I'm trying to get off of him, and I'm thinking, ah, I can't. Ah, crap, he's just going to shoot me in the bottom. Luckily, he moves and lets me wiggle off of him. That one bounces off the side. <laughs> He's going to unload into my turret a few more times. Luckily, my turret does have a little more armor, but my <laughs> my cannon breach is damaged. And there, my, my gun is just completely knocked out now, so I can no longer shoot anything. At this point in the game, with the experience I had, I had no idea if that would repair itself after a minute. I heard people talk about spare parts of some sorts. Uh, it turns out I didn't have any spare parts, so there's no way I can repair my gun. I am just a ramming machine now, so I'm going to play cat and mouse around this thing. I decided I probably have better speed maneuverability than him, so I can run him. Again, I was hoping my gun would fix itself, but I didn't have very high hopes of it. Looks like he's going around the rock the opposite, or the same direction as me. And, oh, there he is. He smartened up. He's like, okay, you're going to be coming around this rock. I'm going to wait for you, and I'm sure he saw me there. But I'm thinking now, okay, I'm going to back up, see if he comes around this way. Didn't see him, I figure he's still in the same spot, so let's rush out here. Let's try to zoom around this rock that's on the side of him and get some cover. And there he is. Ah, we got ammo racked. <laughs> we 
We tried. Not much we could do without a gun, though. If we had a gun still, that might have been a completely different story. But hey, what you gonna do? But oh no, it's not done. We're not done with the T-50. That was a very fun tank. Right now, I'm working on the, the T-34 line. I think I'm gonna push up to the T-54. That's the medium from World of Tanks that I really love, so I want to try it out in War Thunder. Keeping in mind that when this game goes into open beta, uh, right now it's in closed beta, so you have to pay to get into it or else to complete the missions. Uh, and the tank pack, you get tanks when it actually goes into open beta, so that's not a completely just pay-to-play kind of thing. Uh, but I, I want to get to that T-54, and I want to get there before my progress gets wiped when it goes into open beta. Hey look, another tank! Let's ram it! And I've learned since then, and you can kind of see that. Look at its armor, it's got spaced armor all over it. <laughs> I've learned since then that this is a scary tank to mess with. And we're on top of that tank again. Thank you for lowering me down. Fortunately, I just can't do any real damage through that front, front plate of his. Tried to aim for the turret ring, but uh, it's hard to aim in this compared to World of Tanks. Which is more realistic, but eh, it, it didn't help us there, that's for sure. Well, he's slightly damaged, but we didn't really do any notable damage to him. And there's the guy, there's one of our allies. He's getting hit by artillery. There's not artillery pieces like in World of Tanks, but there's artillery strikes that tanks can call in. So like 20 seconds later, there'll be a bunch of explosions like this around, and it looks like he was destroyed by that. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. See you for the next one.